We're living in a divided time. This country is divided right down the middle. There is an enormous amount of anger. There's rage. There's hatred. We see demonstrators screaming at each other, reflecting that rage, reflecting that anger. And I know there are a great many Americans who wish we could and believe we can get back to an environment where we treat each other with civility and decency. Get back to an environment where, yes, we have policy disagreements, we disagree on what the right legislation is to pass, and we even have vigorous debates about what the right policy is. But we do so in a context that respects each other, that doesn't demean the humanity of each other, that doesn't attack the character and drag people through the mud. The politics of personal destruction that we have seen on display in recent days is Washington, D.C. at its very ugliest. And all of us should remember that we're talking about real human beings here. These aren't pawns on a chessboard. These are real people. Dr. Ford has been through hell. The last two weeks, I have no doubt, have been extraordinarily painful for her, for her family. The testimony she gave yesterday was powerful was clearly heart-wrenching, was clear she was hurting and hurting mightily. Having her name made public against her wishes and dragged through the mud was a hurtful thing to do. It was a wrong thing to do. And Judge Kavanaugh, He, too, has been dragged through the mud for the last two weeks in a way that has no precedent. In our polarized society we live in today, it's almost tribalized. Where half of us wear one team's jersey, the other half wear the other team's jersey. And everything we see, we see through the lens of our jersey. So it would not surprise me if across the country... A significant percentage of those on the Democratic side of the aisle saw yesterday's testimony and concluded he must be guilty. And it would not surprise me if a very significant percentage of those on the Republican side of the aisle saw yesterday's testimony, the same testimony, and concluded he must be innocent. One of the consequences of that. You know, Judge Kavanaugh talked about how these smears and the many that have been leveled against him in the last two weeks, how they have, as he put it, destroyed his family. To some that may sound like hyperbole. I don't think it is. Judge Kavanaugh has two young daughters, a 10-year-old and a 13-year-old. For the rest of their lives, their, his, their daughters will go to school, will interact with people, many of whom are convinced their father is a rapist. I want you to think of the effect that has when those are the allegations. That's where it starts. Not, I disagree with your jurisprudence. Not, I think you're wrong in how you interpret the Constitution. But you are, I mean, and, look, and let's be clear, he has been accused of, among other things, participating in repeatedly drugging and gang-raping women to take some of the more sensational, I think, ludicrous claims that have been aired. These little girls are going to have classmates of theirs repeat those charges to them. Some of the most poignant testimony yesterday is when Judge Kavanaugh described how he's taught law at Harvard Law School for over a decade. And he said he may never get to teach law again. And that's entirely possible. That's entirely possible even if Judge Kavanaugh is confirmed to the U.S. Supreme Court as a sitting justice in our polarized world. I'm a graduate of the Harvard Law School. I think it is entirely possible those on the left would say we don't want someone we believe is a rapist ever teaching again. 
He also talked about how much he has loved coaching girls basketball, coaching his daughters in basketball. And he mentioned he may never coach again. That's a very real possible consequence of the mudslinging and irresponsible behavior of the last two weeks. It may well be in this tribalized, partisan, divided world that the parents of the other girls say, no, we don't want him as a coach anymore. Our words and actions have consequences. That being said, even though this is a divided time, even though this is a partisan time, I have faith in the American people. I have faith in the American people that we want to be fair-minded. We want to actually assess the facts. We want to actually assess what happens. I think it's important that once these allegations became public, that Dr. Ford was given a full and fair opportunity to tell her story. I emphatically urged my colleagues that was the right thing to do, to give her the opportunity to testify in public, and that it was important that when she testify, she be given an environment that was fair, that was respectful, that she not be demeaned, that she not be attacked, and she wasn't. That was the right thing to do. The committee, once this had been forced to the front pages of the paper, the right thing to do was give her a public forum and a full public forum to tell her story. But the right thing also re requires, and we saw yesterday, Judge Kavanaugh being given a full and fair opportunity to defend himself. The American people watched that testimony. And you come away with a number of conclusions. Number one, it is clear their testimony is in direct conflict. What they said is directly conflicting. Judge Kavanaugh categorically and unequivocally denied the allegations. So the question is, how do you resolve that discrepancy? How does this committee, how does the United States Senate, how do the American people resolve the discrepancies when you have two witnesses that testify to things diametrically opposed? Well, the only way I know to do, and this is how a court of law operates, this is how most reasonable people operate, is when you have conflicting testimony, you look to, well, what does the rest of the evidence demonstrate? What other evidence is there and what does the evidence demonstrate? Dr. Ford named three fact witnesses who she, she says were there and could corroborate her story. None of the three corroborates her story. Not only do they not corroborate her story, all three of the named fact witnesses explicitly refuted her story. And they did so under penalty of perjury. They didn't do so lightly. They didn't just say it. They did so in a context that under the United States Code, they can face up to five years in prison if they lied to this committee. So every single fact witness that Dr. Ford named has explicitly disputed her allegations.